Hello and welcome to a bite of. <gasps> Just like Agatha would say, if you want a straight answer, ask a straight lady. If you want a straight podcast, this isn't the one for you. <laughs> Get out of here. Hit the road. <laughs> no, uh, everybody's welcome. It's just if you're expecting a straight take, you want. <laughs> Hit the road. <laughs> I'm Noah and joined as always my other coven mate, a coven of two, if you will, Derek. Life coven partner. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Hi, welcome. Uh, Agatha, episode seven. It's the MCU that we've been waiting for. It's Absolutely. finally here. <laughs> They're giving us all the queer content we could want. Yeah. They're killing everyone, but... Spoilers. <laughs> oh, sorry. We didn't give the spoiler warning yet. I apologize. All right. Before we get full on spoilers, because... This was quite an episode. Make sure you're following us. Make sure you're subscribed. If you're on Spotify, you can see our faces. On YouTube, you can see our faces. So multiple ways to see our faces if you want to. I mean, they're, they're okay. Subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. Just throw some stars our way. Patreon, Discord. If you need a place to cry or theorize for this latest episode, go into Discord. We have an Agatha Coven. People have been processing their emotions. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot happening in there. It's <laughs> nice to be able to share your feelings and find others who are feeling the same way as you. Oh, yeah. Community. That's what we're all about, <laughs> right? Um, okay, spoilers ahead. If you have not seen Agatha, if you don't know what the MCU is, if you don't know what a witch is, it's going to be spoiled. Absolutely. So let us officially take a bite of Agatha All Along, Episode 7, Death's Hand in Mine, written by Gia King and Cameron Squires and directed by the one and only Jack Schaefer. Time may be ticking, but for Lilia, it is an everything, everywhere, all at once situation. The coven accepts Billy and finds themselves in a tower where the point of the trial is quite deadly. Lilia becomes empowered with a tarot deck in hand and learns to let go. Oh, God. All right, that's it. I mean, I mean, that's that's like poetry or you something. Said it. <laughs> um, I do want to say, I don't know if I said our names in the intro. I don't know if you did either. Oh my God, I feel just like Lily. I'm slipping in and out. You were there. You did do it, but in your, it's not, I'm not there yet. I'm Noah and this is Derek. I. Just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we're all caught up. Uh, we're finally <laughs> aligned in our path. Our path weaves out of time. Um, oh my God. Okay. Initial thoughts. Initial thoughts. Go ahead. So my initial thoughts are that this was the strongest episode of the season. Ooh. I. You know, I, I was after the last episode, I thought that was going to be one where I felt like emotionally moved or like felt enlightened of the story arc. And I didn't necessarily feel that way. I almost not that I felt let, let down, but I felt like it just kind of happened. And I was like, OK, great. That explains what's going on. This episode, on the other hand, I mean, with Patty Lapone at the forefront leading the entire coven throughout this particular episode, she's just a powerhouse. I mean, we've said it before, we said it again, and I think that the emotional resonance of this episode is what is really affecting everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, again, Patty Lapone. I feel like, you know, if anybody questions why did Lilia get pretty much her own episode outside of Billy and possibly Agatha and Rio later on, it's because it's Patty Lapone and she deserves it because she can carry it i'm gonna say this right now we are championing for her to get an emmy she she deserves an award for this performance um it was beautiful i think even from a technical standpoint every line in this show we've talked about is important and it means something case in point this episode absolutely but i feel like in this episode it really showed that every shot is intentional um it, it, i just felt like it was the the shots of this were making us feel what Lily was feeling. It was disorientating. It was, you know, kind of wobbly and all over the place. And I felt like she was feeling because when she would go back into a scene, she'd kind of like have to center herself again. And the way it was just going from scene to scene and time to time, oh, it was just so good. Yeah, I think that in this episode, there were a number of shots where, I mean, I literally gay gasped. At, the, at them, whether it was a reveal or just the way it looked. The outfits. The outfits, seeing her as a child again. It was just done so beautifully. And just to, again, not to go back. We're going to be talking about how great Patty Lapone is. But in thinking about this episode. The and, one episode we can. Right. And, <laughs> and just thinking about this episode and 
everything that Patty had to balance in Lilia's story here, right? I mean, we're going centuries in the past. We're intersplicing these moments that are maybe 30, 45 minutes away from each other. And so it's so much to kind of realize, okay, well, where am I now? Who am I playing? What do I know? Who have I spoken to? And I think that they needed to have someone leading us on that journey so that we knew exactly what was happening. And I never felt confused once in this. I was in for the ride mm. the entire time. Um, this definitely was an improvement, I would say, for the fourth episode, because if we're, if we're thinking about like each trial is like a witch's trial, right? This one felt just different from the other ones. And I can see why Joe Locke has said this is his favorite episode. I believe a couple other people that worked on it, like the costume designer, and everything. They're like, this is my favorite episode. Mm. Um, and I can see why this is like on par with like uh, Lamentus for Loki or episode eight for WandaVision. This is just like up, up there. And it, it really rose this series in my rankings for just favorite MCU things. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, it's so funny to think about that of like, look at what is like the best of the MCU. And it's like these things. Mm -hmm. It's not the huge, big name superheroes while those are amazing it's like we need these types of stories to have the mcu have more life and just just to continue these yeah and also to expand what the mcu actually is you know and has to offer absolutely and i feel like this entire trip during with with magic uh has been really eye-opening as far as what it means to be a marvel property um and so it's exciting to see that it's doing so well and people are really liking it um also, just to comment on one thing you said about like how it compares to episode four, I feel like sometimes in these Marvel series, they do, they start off strong and then they tend to dip down around four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine is when we kind of get going again. And I feel like we're on that same trajectory. Um, and really last episode, we were heading back up again, but this really shot us back to the top. Yeah. And I'm really curious to see why they put the last two episodes together. Mm -hmm. um, there must be something going on. Like it, it just has to naturally feed into the other one. It's just interesting, right? Maybe they just didn't want to release them after Halloween. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah, it's like all the marketing <laughs> thing. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. I also, before we get out of like initial thoughts or just like talking about the episode, um, I love these types of stories. I love the out of sync, timey-wimey, out of chronological order most of the time they're sad, right? Like this is like just by nature, they are two that really come to mind Haunting Hill House with Nell. That is like, I think to a T this kind of story. Mm -hmm. um, and then Doctor Who did it, has done it time and time again. Um, I just love those stories. They, they do resonate with me, um, but they're typically sad, which is like, oh, oh, yeah. I was just thinking that just happened in the last Doctor Who. Mm hmm. Right. With uh, 73 yards. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <sighs> so sad, but so satisfying. Right. Yeah. And they're just so poignant. They can really drive a point home. And I think, you know, with Patty Lapone at the helm. Ugh. how can we not? All right. We're getting into the episode. Yeah. Let's dive in. Let's I want let's take a pit stop before we get to the trial and the Lilia of it all. We have to talk about Agatha and teen or, or Billy. <laughs> I'm so used to calling him teen. Let's talk about them leading up to the trial. So. There's a really interesting exchange that they do. Um, Agatha tries to taunt Billy into talking to her. He's like, where's Rio? She sidesteps it. So this is, again, before we get that reveal of like who Rio is. But one of the best points that we hear here, 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 <laughs> is that where's Wanda? Mm -hmm. Is she dead? Billy asks her, point blank, is Wanda dead? She's like, no. Yes, no, maybe. Come on. Like, I, as soon as she said yes, I was like, oh, okay. Now we have like a starting point. Wanda is dead for sure. And then she left it up in the air. I'm like, great. Now we're back to where we were. We don't know if she's dead or not. No. And I don't think they want us to know either. And I'm, I'm curious if like they were told do not confirm or deny. I mean, we'll see by the end of this, but I'm pretty sure they were like, like, shh. Like, don't don't talk about. Yeah. It. Yeah. And I mean, I, that is just so Agatha. That's the thing with Agatha, right, is that it always feels like Agatha is only going to give you the information she wants you to know. So at this point in time, whether she like it's almost like maybe she does know, but mm -hmm. she's not going to tell anyone. I mean, she, it is really interesting that the body that we saw in the beginning, because he asked her, like, did you see a body? I mean, she wasn't on 
the mountain, so how would she know? But the body she saw, we never saw a face. You know, we saw things and like the look of what Wanda was wearing. So we assume it's her. But I am curious of like what I'm wondering if we're going to see that from a different perspective. Right. Because what we know right now is that it's flowers. Right. So. (laughs) But she saw something different. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so, you know, I think that's something that we have to think about is that all of these kind of shows that Agatha was playing through while she was still under the spell, was there any truth to any of it? Mm -hmm. There's something that comes up a few times in this, uh, but particular in this, particularly, (laughs) I know how to speak, I swear. Um, She has, she asks him, like, do you have any other queries for your babysitter, your old babysitter, which is a cool nod to her being a babysitter in the comics. Queries. Yeah. (laughs) And she also says, I'm your mom's ex, comma, and pause, best friend. We get it. You're gay. (laughs) But, you know, he he says something of like, that's not my mother. I have my mother. I already have a mother. What do you make of that? What do you make of this like inner turmoil that Billy slash William is continuing to go through? The question that I think we have to ask is now that the sigil is broken, does are those memories back? In any way, not that the sigil stops the memories, but, you know, Lilia put it on him for a reason. So what he at this point remembers is that for three years he was raised by the Kaplans, right? So and he convinced himself he was exactly. So to say that Wanda is his mother, I mean, he was probably actually raised by the Kaplans longer than he was actually raised by Wanda because, yeah, you know what I mean? That was like maybe two days or something. (laughs) You know what I mean? a couple hours. <laughs> exactly. Th- they aged, but that wasn't the true time of it. So I think for him, he's still feeling that inner turmoil of who am I? Am I William or am I Billy? And, you know, it, it's almost like this grand family secret was uncovered. But the thing is, he's been living this one life for all the time that he's known. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still in the belief that he doesn't have William's memories or his own from the hex. Just because the way he was talking and still presenting himself, it wasn't like, I remember everything. Because I feel like since it was such a big thing in the show for him not having that or knowing if he's William, I feel like if and when he gets those back, like they'll make a point to Mm. show us, you know. Yeah. Um, It is interesting because I think one of the things that we have to remember and I, um, I keep seeing people talk about it of like when, you know, Billy gets his wish or when they get to the end of the road. It's like, but the road gives you what you're missing. And I feel like there's, there's a reason why they told us that. And I'm more curious if at the end of it, he becomes both. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's a way for William to live on. Um, I don't know if that means that he is also William, but if he has the memories of William and Billy, how would that work? Right. I could feel like that's a way to satisfy both. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The duality of, of his person. I am so, so curious to know what actually happens at the end of the road. I can't wait to see that. Is it, is it just another trial? Is it some sort of being? Is it all the people that left you on the road that you have to face them again? And how does your sort of wish come true or, right. or the thing you're looking for come true? Yeah. That's the thing I'm like so, so curious about. If we're thinking about the scenes that we've seen and clips and trailers and stuff that we haven't seen yet, we're definitely get whatever the next trial is looks like a morgue Mm. type thing. And it is purpley. So I'm curious if that's actually Agatha's trial Um, and like all the bodies and stuff that like her body count. Yeah. Um, But also Jen is there. So it's it's going to be interesting to see how Jen plays into this trial. Um, but there's just that scene of Agatha and Billy on the floor and she has her hands on his head and it seems like something is happening to him. Yeah. So I'm curious if that's like him getting everything back and she's trying to help him. My like, okay, we'll save this for the end of like what we think is going to happen in the end. Um, I'll save that part for that because i don't want to like go all the way to the end right now okay <laughs> we, we still have so much to talk about we'll stop there <laughs> but i do i find it like a, a, those the exchange really interesting and one of the last things that happens in this exchange is billy questions if agatha actually was on the road at all which i know that was something we were kicking around at the beginning because it was like she doesn't seem like she knows what she's doing nor wants to be there mm-hmm. so 
if the road changes for the coven, it would make sense. Or if this is Billy's mind doing like some type of hex thing, it would also make sense on why she's just like, whatever. Yeah. And of course, <laughs> and the question of why did she lie to begin with mm-hmm. of ever being on the road? What is she trying to hide or cover up? I also just everybody died. Well, that's true. <laughs> I do think uh, that it is interesting that, you know, the last time we saw the group together, Billy went all blue on them and, you know, threw them and buried them in mud. And here they are having a very civil conversation. It seems that covens get over things very easily. People oh, yeah. just happen to witch out and they're just like, all right, are you done? OK, let's let's yeah. continue. <laughs> you good? Your powers are under control. Yeah. OK, they're showing it. us how to um, forgive and forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on to the trial and Lilia of it all, and also the big reveal of Rio, which I think everybody by now, just like Wigan, we were like, yeah, but cool. We were like, a <laughs> doy. Yeah. <laughs> I, the opening of this episode, oh, as soon as it showed her falling, because that was the first shot we got in this episode, I was like, she's going to die. She's going to die in this episode. But just the journey leading up to that was so freaking cool. Because it's like, when you think about it, it's like, what would the trial be with tarot cards? Mm -hmm. Just have swords fall from the ceiling. And on top of that, have them stab and squish you. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely. There's no escaping them. Even if you manage to dodge a falling one, the whole ceiling's coming down anyway. Squished and stabbed. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're getting uh, skewered no matter what. (laughs) So you better get it right. So what did you think about the uh, costumes of all of them? Oh, the costumes were so fun. I mean... I was trying to piece together like why they are each that particular witch. And so what I've come up with is, well, obviously, you know, Lily is the good witch, right? Especially in this trial. She is the... She's also the mother of the coven. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, for Jen, she looks very much like the witch from Snow White, right? And so there's a poison apple. And so she deals with poisons and tinctures and things like that. It's also like the opposite of her. Like she was very like ugly. Gorgeous. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And she's normally gorgeous. And it's like the opposite of her. Right. And then so the interesting thing with Agatha being the Wicked Witch or Elphaba, I guess, um, and Joe Locke being Maleficent is that they're painted one way in their original runs. Right. But then there are uh, subsequent materials that show that they actually have a duality Mm -hmm. to them. And so I mean, that is literally a duality with Billy and William, but with Agatha, you know, Elphaba is almost misunderstood. She's seen as so evil, but it's all for a reason. She did say it was based on her. Right. So I'm curious if they mean like the actual like original. Or the Gregory Maguire version. (laughs) Or the Gregory Maguire version. Um, I'm leaning more towards the Wicked version, Mm -hmm. Um, but it is an interesting thought to think about. Um, like why I, I really it does make me so sad that we will never get to see what Alice's yeah. version of that would be so sad. Um, I like to think, though, that like the reason why they look like pop culture witches is because it's to mess with Lilia, because the entire time she's very much like that's cultural appropriation. That's just like a stereotype of witches. Brooms are so like, Ugh. and it's like the trial did it to fuck with her. Of course. That, and it's like, yeah. Fuck you, trial, but also like the looks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just was uh, a customer's dream, I think. I do want to say Joe Locke's lips looked gorgeous. The and the cheekbones. Bones. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, he is giving full on Angelina Jolie cheekbone. I really liked that. Again, like Joe Locke as a man is in a Marvel show dressed up like a, a witch. I just love that, that it's just like, yes, this, this boy can dress up as their favorite witch or whatever. I just love the, the message of that. It's like, oh yeah, I could do that too. Like if I wanted to be Maleficent, who the fuck is going to tell me no? I'm going to look great doing it. Hell yeah. I just love that. I just love that. Like in this episode, they really drove like, this is queer, express yourself, be who you want to be. Yeah. And I I forget in the trial, he had a line that he said about something about being queer or not being straight or something like that. Yeah, he told Lilia because it's the the querent that is. Oh, that's right. And he's like, oh, I'm the queer ent. Exactly. And so it's I like, think you're so right. I love them just like driving that message home to us in this. I feel like it's just like it's always been that thing of like being a comic book reader 
and seeing how free and open and queer these comics can be and then like having the MCU be here for how long and it's like oh in, in Eternals we finally got like a gay kiss but it was they were gay but let, like let's move on right um so in this them being like very open about it is just it makes me more excited yeah for what's to come and i i i there is such beauty in that you know for me I think it's different for the generations that have come after me. Um, you know, not that I'm ancient in any way, <laughs> but when I was in grade school, I and even high school, I spent so much time hiding who I was and trying not to let people know. And so to see a teen character, full name teenager, which mm. was a hilarious line. Oh my God. Um, she used his full name. He used his full name. Uh, <laughs> it just feels so wonderful to see a you know, in, in the MCU in particular, a teen just so openly being themselves in so many ways, even with Eddie in the last episode, you know, it's, it just is, it's honestly groundbreaking for this superhero genre to have this storyline in it. And even just Rio and Agatha there. I mean, there's multiple times at the top of this episode, she's like, you want a straight answer? Ask a straight lady. It's yeah. like, well, we have our for sure confirmation. She ain't straight, which oh. it's Catherine Hahn, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, it is, it's very exciting. We have to celebrate the little rainbow wins that we yes. get. <laughs> yeah. Before uh, they, you know, kill a queen of Broadway in front of us to <sighs> make the entire queer community cry. <laughs> I also wonder if it was like, Patty Lampone is in this. We can be as gay as we want. And Marvel's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Go for it. They're like, we're singing, we're dressing up, yeah. we're doing everything we possibly can. Um, so let's talk about, so outside of Agatha and um, Billy, well, so she, there's an interesting thing that happens here. So they're separated, right? And I did find somebody online that wrote, that made sure to kind of compile the cards that Agatha puts down because I, again, the show does everything for a reason. And if they don't go anywhere, they don't go anywhere. But I did want to talk about it because I feel like it's interesting. Please share. So this um, person on Twitter, uh, Bambus underscore brain, had wrote them down and kind of what they assume that they mean, right? So in the traveler spot, there's the five of wands reversed, avoiding conflict, um, respecting differences. The path behind is the world card, fulfillment, harmony, completion, path ahead, page of swords, curiosity, restlessness, mental energy, mm -hmm. obstacles, wheel of fortune. Feel up. Oh. <laughs> Change cycles, inevitable fate. Mm. Uh, potential windfall, the hangman, sacrifice, release, martyrdom. I don't like that. Um, what's missing? Two of wands, planning, making decisions, leaving home. Mm. The destination, ten of swords reversed. Can't get worse. Only up from here. Inevitable end. Uh, that's I feel like that last part doesn't make sense with the first two parts. <laughs> right. That's really interesting to see that it's like for the hanged man, it means sacrifice, but yet the destination can be ongoing, mm -hmm. but there is an inevitable end. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the hangman definitely seems like if this is Agatha, right? Because she's the one placing the cards down, sacrifice or release of some sort. And is that nicholas scratch in some way because it seems like that's very much we can't forget about him assuming that his hair is in the locket like there's going to be some type of getting over something mm -hmm. maybe um but the destination is interesting can't get worse only up from here i don't know sacrifice but, seems the opposite well that's the thing is and and so i think the thing that we have to think about though is that what is worse? Like for us, it's like, oh, well, sacrificing yourself, that's that's the mm -hmm. worst. But maybe for Agatha, that's finally being selfless and finally giving herself over for the betterment of others. Mm. So, About time. I mean, really. I mean, it does very much seem like if we're if we're going with the whole like the reason why she was dressed up as a wicked witch, not only because she was amazing and gorgeous in it, but again, it's that misunderstanding everything that we were kind of theorizing with when he was researching her and it was like, she was on the Titanic. She was all of this. And it's like, I think people are just assuming she's bad because of one mistake. So it's going to be interesting to see, is she going to finally become more than what people assume? And she's going to break out of that, like 
oh, this is what people think I am. So I'm going to act that way. It's going to be interesting to see where she grows. Yeah. Is she going to let others narrative of her drive her actions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's weird because she is so supportive of Billy. She does care for the coven other than killing Alice. But, you know. Yeah. (laughs) Right. But. Right. She goes in and out, though. So I think that it's that inner struggle. You know, I feel like this this show doesn't really have a villain. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't I could eat my words and who knows with Rio at the end. Um, But it definitely seems like what this story is trying to tell us is the the um, like the journey of the heart. Right. It's the the inner stuff. The the villain is yourself. And to fulfill that journey, you have to overcome that or accept it. Um, So we'll see. And I think that's mirrored in Lilia's story Mm -hmm. here, right? Is that, you know, we've heard little snippets of her life and how she was cast out so often, but it almost seems like it was all for a reason. I mean, imagine though, like your power is not only are you kind of slipping in and out, right? But your power, and I think she specifically said in that part where she talks about, um, you know, I predicted all these deaths, but it's all death. Like any village that she was in, any town, and it's like, oh, I'm used to just tell them their loved ones are dying or their subjects are dying or whatever. So it's like, imagine that as your existence. It's like, I'm the bearer of bad news. I'm literally the messenger of death. Yeah. It's awful. It is really awful. She deserves better. <laughs> she she does. But it, it, you know, this was an interesting episode. And so, you know, throughout the six episodes that came prior to this we we had breadcrumbs the oh, whole time right the connecting so, yes the connecting right so we were always trying to track her outbursts that didn't fit into the scene we were always trying to track the tarot cards that she just yelled out um and and now we see how it all fits together what did you think of how it all came together in this episode you know i think it was one of those things where we knew Right. Because we kind of got snippets of like when Alice died, we were like, oh, that's that makes sense. And why she was like, don't save Agatha Harkness. We put that together. But I think finally seeing it all come together was one of the best payoffs for the MCU Um, or even just kind of shows. Right. It just was so well done. Um, I loved it. I think it was a perfect way to send off this character of like she isn't wispy or kooky. It was all for a reason. Yeah. Um, but what a way for your powers to work. Oh, so confusing. So disorienting. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and how could, you know, when she's going into these villages, how could they not see her as off her rocker when she might be having a conversation with you and then blurts out something random or has a convulsion because she's having a vision? And she's but, like centuries ahead or centuries behind. Right. But this well, is all her strength, yeah. actually. And so... It's so sad to think that her strength is actually what ended up casting her out and making her sort of a loner in her life until she found this final coven. Oh, I really appreciate um, Jen and her's relationship in this because I feel like, you know, we, we see them bond almost throughout this show, um, but not enough. Mm-hmm. Right. And it is very much the Agatha and Billy show. Um, but it's, it was nice to have an episode that felt like an anthology but very centered around Lilia but still played a bigger part yeah in this whole series and just having their relationship and seeing like how much she is the mother of the coven especially with Jen oh beautiful yeah. I um I saw a few clips Patty appeared on Sashir and Nicole Byers podcast yeah and you know Nicole Byer asked you know what is what was it like working with my best friend on this show and Patty gave this just really beautiful answer of they had such a connection, the two of them, and looking into her eyes and everything that she was willing to give to her in the scene as a partner. I think that connection in real life played off on screen. Um, and, you know, it was funny for us to see her saying things to Jen and Jen saying, you just told me that, you know? <laughs> but what we see is when they first fall under the mud, under the ground, we see it later in the episode, but they actually have a choice, which is interesting. Right. They mm-hmm. can either continue on the road to the trial or we see that underground system that Mrs. Hart spoke about that they were saying is the exit. Yeah. So it's like, can you will you abandon your coven to save yourself or will you continue onward? Oh, so it, it, it's like this episode was just so good with the choices, with the ticking clock, with the, the pushing the characters to make these decisions. 
Um, and I think those two witches particularly was really interesting to see make those choices. Now, of course, Lilia is like, I have to go to my trial. I have to help my coven. And Jen has been this character that is very self-preservation, is very looking, making sure that she's safe. Um, in Alice's trial, she's like, I'm going to need a circle around me and didn't leave when Billy got hurt. She still stayed in that circle. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it is very much like Jen to be like, I'm, is that the exit? Oh, I'm okay. I'm bye. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to go. Um, but it wasn't until Lilia was like, I would love for you to come with me. Like mm -hmm. you are my sister in this craft. Let's, we can do this together, but it's your decision. Right. I mean, how are you going to say no? Patty Lapone is like, we're, we're like sisters. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. You're right. <laughs> I'll go with you. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, I also thought it was beautiful to see her as a young girl with her maestra, with, with her teacher, yeah. you know, the, maybe the, even the leader of her coven. And it's so interesting that, you know, from what we know is that when we're seeing her as a young girl, she's actually living that in that moment, but all out of sync. Yes. But her maestra is aware of that. Yeah. And she asks her these questions to dig deeper into herself, to realize what's going on. And so. And for her like teacher to sit there and be like, oh, this is fine. Like, this is your first lesson, learn, like reading tea leaves. And it's like, oh, are you from? OK, like what's going on? Yeah. And even <laughs> that thing of, you know, she says, oh, I was always terrible at reading tea leaves. And she says something along the lines of, no, that's just what you told yourself. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Right. You know, there's such a lesson to be learned there. And it almost felt like, you know, and, and now knowing in retrospect that this is the final, these are the final moments of her life. It's that thing of when you're given so much incredible advice, but you almost don't realize it until it's too late. Um, and in this, rec in this moment, it wasn't necessarily too late. It came at the right time. But, you know, if these lessons, she had learned them earlier on in her existence, you know, maybe her path could have been a little different. And I, there is some comfort, though, that she when she was talking to Jen, she said, when I was younger, this happened a lot. But it's happening now, which is funny to think about because it's like it it didn't stop happening. You just got to the point in your older self where then it was happening, you know, so that timey wimey thing. Right. It yeah. was always going to happen. Yeah. Um, just unfortunately, it was at the end. Right. But there is some comfort in her coming to those realizations of like, oh shit, I was a badass witch. I did everything that I could have done. And I was a mother of a coven. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. There's and also like in that. Yeah. Yeah. And like her final words being like, I loved being a witch. Oh, tears. Uh, oh my gosh. And, and even in that moment when she's talking to Jen, you know, she's like, but it's happening a lot more now. And she goes, I think it's coming to the end. And Jen thinks she's talking about the road. The trial, yeah. But she's actually talking about her life. I, again, the show, these writers, Jack Schaefer, all of these people, it's just so good. It's so good. Yeah. I, there was a moment after we were done watching this where like, we were like, oh, like this was that episode yeah. of this series. And granted, the next two episodes can be even better but like there was just something special about it yeah because there was just there was i don't know there was just such depth to this episode that they they anchored everything even though we're talking about a witch who slips through time they anchored it in true emotion and just being a human mm -hmm. um and how difficult that can be and so uh, you know much like um much like her teacher says of like you know, I'm not afraid of death or death comes for everyone. It's the one thing we all have in common, Ugh. you know, but I think that also in life, we all go through difficult times, right? And so seeing this on the a play out, even though it's with a witch, even though it's, you know, during a trial where swords are falling from the ceiling, we can go, damn, life is really fucking mm. tough sometimes. Oh, yeah. But it's getting through it and knowing your value. Oh, yeah. That matters. At and the with end. your coven. Yeah. Even if it's like your with your chosen family. Yeah. Even if it's with ones that you didn't necessarily choose. And it's like, just look around. You yeah. have you have a coven, even if you don't think you do. You have one with us. <laughs> You're part of our coven. Yeah. Um, OK, let's talk about. So when Lilia and Jen finally get there, um, I do have to say probably personally one of the best burns that Agatha did in the show so far. 
she calls Lilia Dory, like from Finding Nemo. She's like, okay, Dory. And it's like, <laughs> yo, Agatha, stop. <laughs> it's not a memory issue. She's actually living her life uh, sliding through time. <laughs> like, can you just be serious for one second? Like, the, yeah. like the scene where she was putting down the cards, laughing and cackling. Like, what? <laughs> I can't. So anyway, let's go over the cards that Lilia, the person that should have been doing it in the first place, does. Mm. Um, I do also really like that at first she thought it was supposed to be Billy that was doing it, but the cards were all about her. Because so many times I would assume that these these people, these palm readers, the the divination and everything are doing it for other people. Right. And not doing it for yourself. Um, so it was beautiful for her to do the final reading for herself. Um, so we have the traveler, the queen of cups, Lilia, empathetic, intuitive, inner voice to be trusted, missing, three of pentacles, her coven, collaboration, community, singu- singular voices waiting to harmonize, uh, path behind the knight of swords or the knight of wands, Alice, full of fire, fights bravely, uh, path ahead, the high priestess, Jen, immense spiritual power, unable or unwilling to use it. The obstacle, three of swords, Agatha, heartbreak, sorrow, grief, damn. <laughs> the windfall, the tower reversed, William slash Billy, disaster, destruction, sudden upheaval, but reversed, miraculous transformation. Destination, death. Rio. <laughs> and I do want to say, so the person that put this together is, um, again, on Twitter, and it's at FZZT. Sylvie. So I just want to give them a shout out. Um, thank you for the internet and people compiling that. This coupled with every single time she did a card and who it was about showing the card, the scene. I think the one that got me, Agatha. Me too. Agatha's, I was just like, okay, one, was that there? <laughs> yeah. Was that in the actual scene? Good question. Um, I don't care. So I don't know why, but it was just like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like that. This is who Agatha is. I mean, it's funny, right? Because it's like the production company designed these cards. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they designed these cards. They set these scenes up. But when you when you look at them side by side, when you were in those scenes, you weren't going, well, that looks like kind of staged. That looks kind of whatever. Like it was just their character entrance. Right. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Especially when she first meets Jen. Mm. right in in agatha's house we were just like yeah yes but it's like it matches the card you know i i did have a moment i was like wow you know that was such a powerful pose for alice to go into but that's how the knight is holding his weapon it's just agatha's with the broomsticks oh my gosh doing the swords um and also it's just like i didn't realize how much grief and sorrow was in agatha's face at that moment with teen like that it's just it kind of made you realize that like Oh my God, the, the teaser posters that they did months ahead of time, or I, I would say maybe a couple months, um, was crazy to see play out in real time. You know, they don't really do that ever. So it's just like a meta waiting for it to happen. And mm-hmm. it finally did. And it's just Lily is the one driving it, who is Patty Lapone. And it's just like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> we just have to be grateful for it at yeah. this point in time. Um, geez, Louise. I mean, any any like I guess final thoughts on like the trial itself before we go to the upheaval of it? <laughs> I think they did. You know, for a very short episode, there were a lot of beats in this trial. You know, first Agatha, then Billy, then finally Lilia. Lilia coming to the realization of what was going on. Like they packed so much into this short episode. And the Salem Seven. Oh yeah, you know, rip. <laughs> <laughs> they did they i feel like this if you're gonna make the episode under 40 minutes this is how you do it mm-hmm. and i i'm not sure if it was just like the payoff and like the literal like on the edge of your seat just like oh my god like just watching everything complete silence uh gay gasps here and there um but this is how you do it this was such an effective way to do a short episode i didn't feel like it was short no not at all and especially in in you know you you know what's coming mm-hmm. right you know what's going to happen but waiting for it and and looking to see how it's going to happen and and knowing that it was her choice in that moment yep i love to think so when lilia finally does it right she 
read for herself. She read for the coven, which is a beautiful thought. Um, the Salem Seven are there, and it's like, how are they going to get out of it? It's like swords on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, but I just love the last scene that Lilia is with her coven, and she's ushering them through the Iron Maiden and out. And I thought in my head, and I don't know if it's because of all of the Wizard of Oz imagery, and she's literally Glinda, but it's like Lilia gave Agatha courage. She gave Tina brain and Jenna heart. She literally, it was literally just Wizard of Oz because mm. she talked to each one of them as she was like taking them out. Um, it was just beautiful. And then the final thing of, I love being a witch. What a badass way to kill the Salem Seven. I hope they are done because one, I don't want her death to be in vain. Mm -hmm. I don't care that they were after Agatha this whole time. Let the mother of the coven flip that tower upside down. Yeah. And just that slow motion fall especially when we see it through the tower window dang so good and then of course like whick, 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 so of good. all of them getting impaled i wanted to re-watch that scene to like listen for the impalements to be like was it all seven did all seven get on there i mean i could see maybe one of them escaping but like what a fucking badass way that final shot of her just like kind of being content yes with like this is the choice. This is where my path led to death. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was very relieved that we, although we got to see the Salem Seven get impaled, we didn't have to watch Lilia get yes. impaled. We don't watch Patty LeBone no, get impaled. No, but we have that beautiful scene of her as a young girl again, sitting down at the table. So I'm curious. I want to I wanna say my thought on that scene. But I'm curious if you felt similar or different in that. So I'm curious if like after she fell and she woke up that her younger self, she gets to live the parts of her childhood that she wasn't able to because she was like time slipping and stuff. Because that look that she gave was very much like this is Lilia then being able to get to redo it in a way. Um, that's how I took it. Yeah, I, I took it that way as well. I mean, I'm also a person that like, I want the best for the characters that I love. So I think that she now has all of the wisdom of her life, but now in the body of a young girl. I think that she's very much aware that she's back at this point right? in time. Because that was that look, right? Yeah. And it's like, I feel like she's finally like, like, okay with her abilities and proud to be a witch. Yes. And it's like, that's the feeling that I got. I don't know. Obviously, that's going to change the course of her path or how that exactly works. But like that look just made me think that. Yeah, yeah. it really felt content. It felt um, like she was home. Accomplished. Accomplished. Yeah. yeah. Badass. Ugh. And of course, we cannot, obviously cannot end this episode without talking about the reveal. We all knew it was coming. We theorized. Um, but oh, my God, what a reveal. The having... <laughs> And Lilia and Jen drop through that hole and then Lilia waking up and seeing this figure come towards her. And when she's like, Rio is death again, we knew it was coming, but the way they did it with showing the Ouija board with showing the, the iconography, it was showing her come out of that shadow and just the skull face like in her true form almost. Oh my God. Hot, sexy. I get it, Agatha. I get it. <laughs> And everyone you looking at Agatha going like, really, <laughs> really, you dated, you were dating death. Maybe your most substantial relationship was with death. She only likes the bad guys. Apparently so. Yeah. This is one of the baddest for sure. <laughs> it is really interesting. It's so, because what does that mean? Right. That's my big question. What does it mean that death itself, death, not Hela. Hela is the goddess of death. Um, she's like. She's like a, a manager in a company and Rio is the company if, you know, she is above Hela. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what does it mean that now the death itself is introduced in the MCU? But also, what does that mean for Agatha? Right. And for Billy? Um, is this why only one witch goes through the end of the trial? Because the payment is to pay death with your coven? Yeah, what she, does that mean? I mean, if we think of the of the scene from Alice's trial, she says, you know, I collect my bodies. And so is it like she's literally just on this journey to be taking them as they all die? I feel like we need to revisit the first 
two episodes with Rio's first introduction um, with Agatha because it it's very interesting to think of how she was first introduced 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 um, of wanting to kill Agatha, going after her, and then Agatha being like, "No, this isn't how you want to do it. Let me get my full power, and then we can duke it out." But then they kind of like fizzled that out in a way, and it was like, "Wait, why was is Rio death?" wanting to just collect Agatha because she should have died a long time ago. Are these witches breaking rules? Like, are they not supposed to be living this long? I'm, I'm curious. I'm like, what is that? Because then we get the whole scar conversation with Rio. And she's like, Agatha is my scar because I did something. Again, I think we can theorize it's probably she took Nicholas Scratch from mm-hmm. her. It was her job. She didn't want to do it. So why would Rio then be upset at Agatha in the beginning? Right. Yeah. No, it's a it's a really good question. Like what what really brought Rio back into Agatha's life? Or sorry, I just had like a ding. Um, or is it like she was upset that she kind of ghosted her type of thing? Because it's death. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. She could be as mad or happy as she wants. And it's like, is that her response to finally finding Agatha again of like, you didn't answer my messages. Like, I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> you or, <know? laughs> or is it something to be... No. I don't know. Because, uh, of course, the timing with Billy showing up and Rio showing up at the same time, like, how is this all connected? That's she, the question. And she did say when she first saw Teen at the time, she's like, why did you bring him? So it seems like either she's upset that the body of something that she claimed is still being used. Right. Or maybe she's not able to fully take William. I don't know. I mean, I feel like this is the points of like, what does this mean? Yeah. Um, I am going to be curious, though. The biggest thing we can't forget is Agatha, right? Where is her going into the finale? Let's think of like Billy and Agatha. Where do you think this is going for them? Like, is there a solution or ending that you would be happy with or not happy with? You know, I don't know if it's a happy or not happy thing, but the thing that I really do wonder is who is going to be left at the end of this, right? And I I keep harping on what the title of this show means, mm-hmm. Agatha All Along, right? Other than the song, which mm-hmm. we know, but, you know, I feel like there's going to be some more meaning here. So is Agatha the key all along? Was she the villain all along? You know, what is actually going to be happening mm. with Agatha? Yeah, I'm, I think my, what I'm hoping that happens or I could see hopefully maybe happening is that like she finally lets down the facade of being this big bad witch and realizes that with Billy being the son of the Scarlet Witch and having this immense power that he does need some type of teacher and that she does belong in a coven. Like, don't kill your coven this time. Foster your coven. Yeah, that'd right? be nice. Just, bear, you know, just simple things. Learn from Lilia. <laughs> right. Um, and she helps him. That's what I hope. Um, while still keeping it Agatha. Because, I mean, I feel like Agatha isn't, again, a villain or a hero. She is who she wants to be. And I wouldn't mind that if in this series she learned to not play into what everybody thinks of her and to finally help. Yeah, You know, because imagine if she would have mentored Wanda, Wanda instead of trying to claim her power. Right. What would have happened? You know, maybe people not dying. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she wouldn't have gone on a crazy journey through the multiverse and mm-hmm. tried to steal other people's kids. Yeah. I am worried, though, about Billy. Mm-hmm. He's the one that I'm worried about with Rio around. Um, I'm not too sure how that's going to go. Do you think it's going to be like, that's not your body? Like, you can't take that? Right maybe or of like you're not supposed to exist Mm. i don't know i i again i don't know the rules of death i was gonna say what are the rules of death right so i guess we're gonna find out but billy being miraculously created that way and then also taking over a vessel my hope is that billy and william can be one is rio gonna like that they could Mm. truly be billium (laughs) we need billium we need billium let them exist what a beautiful episode yeah. So good. So phenomenal. So good. We have one more episode left. It's going to be a supersized one, I guess, because we have two episodes and we have just the whole series yeah. to digest. Um, so that will be next week. But let us know what you thought. Give us your thoughts. Comment below. Share your thoughts. Go on Discord. I don't know. Find a way to tell us what you think. 
um, because we love hearing what people think. Um, because a lot of times you guys think of some crazy things yeah. that we did not. <laughs> I want to know what you all think is going to happen next. Ooh, what's the ending? Mm-hmm. Uh, also, what are the lyrics? What are going to be the... I know we were looking, we were trying to track, but there's no way of telling. It's just going to be down, 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 down. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> further. All right. So until next week, Bye. end of Agatha. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.